Hi, I'm Cass. Many of you know me as Astral Arts, the Spirit Witch VTuber. I'm a VTuber and V-artist. I make art and assets for other VTubers and content creators. Everything from models to overlays and emotes. Recently, I experimented with a new type of PNG Tuber program called PNG Tuber Plus. It's made by Kaya Kairos, and I decided to do an interest check on Twitter to see if people would be interested in me offering them as a new type of commission for a more expressive and animated type of PNG Tuber. And, well... Needless to say, people were interested. People were also asking me to make a tutorial for how I made it, since as far as I know, there's not really any tutorials for the program yet. So I decided to take a crack at it. Let's get right into it. Oh, and um, please note, everything that I've learned about this program is from trial and error, so keep that in mind. <laughs> okay, so this is the program. It's actually pretty simple, and I really love how it has an entirely transparent interface, unless you're actually editing the model that you're making. Super cool. Uh, Kaya Kairos, thank you for that. That's honestly really awesome. Um, but in order to be able to edit our model, we have to click this little button right down here. It looks like a pencil. And then it'll turn into this. Now we have this fun little menu up here that lets us edit the exit mode, add a new sprite, link a sprite, replace a sprite, duplicate a sprite, and then save and load your models. But before we do any of that, we have to set up our model. If any of you are familiar with doing things in Live 2D, you can know that cutting a model can be a little... a little much. <laughs> here is a picture of my folder that has all of the pieces of my model in it. Make note of a lot of these pieces. Uh, really, it just depends on how much movement you want your model to have. I very specifically made it so that my chest, my waist, both of my arms, a couple of the different pieces of hair, like the bangs and then the back of the head, as well as things like all of the different pieces for my eyes, nose, and mouth, and the base head with no expression on it at all, were all separated out. You need these all to be separated in order to be able to use this program properly. Just keep in mind what pieces you want to move separately from each other, and that should give you a decent guide. Or if you need to, just copy what I've done here. Also, you need to make sure that all of these pieces can overlap with each other and that they are transparent. So for example, if you have a headpiece, it needs to be the entire head and skull. Don't cut it off where your hair pieces are, make sure it's the whole head. And just save them all transparently as .png files. I find that it's easiest to draw out all of the model pieces and kind of finish them as a finished PSD file, and then slowly take each piece and export them separately as PNGs, if that helps you with your organization. Plus, that way you can see what it looks like when it's going to be done. Oh, Beauregard's going to help us with the next bit. So, once you have all of that taken care of and all of your files are set up and ready to go, all you have to do is make a new model, or you can just replace the old existing model, um, and then you need to click the Add Sprite button. The Add Sprite button is super important. It's basically how you do everything. When you click it, this little thing will pop up. It's, I think, an internal file path destination. Um, so you have to go and find your um, directories for the program itself and put your folder inside of that. I couldn't figure out a way to get it to redirect to something like my documents. I tried typing it in up here and it never worked. I'm not sure if that's like a bug or what, or if maybe I'm just not very smart, which is, you know, a possibility. <laughs> But so I have everything saved in this. It's called PNG plus test. I just made a new folder in my app data folder. Um, I'll put a little like address on the screen here so you guys know whereabouts the folder in your computer should be. Um, but I have in this folder all of my pieces. It has everything. It has all the little things, including a bunch of like fixed pieces because I realized that I exported a couple pieces wrong. Don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> um, and you basically just have to start loading those in. By the way, if you need to, uh, the program actually comes with a default avatar that looks like this to kind of give you an idea of how things work. You can sort of look at it and check all the settings and kind of figure out what you want to do with your stuff from there, which is really neat. All right, so once you've imported everything, it should look something like this. It might be a little bit of a chaotic mess around the face area, or if you've imported your pieces in the wrong order, it might look even more chaotic than this. Don't worry, it's not a problem. We will fix it. <laughs> So what we then want to do is you can either use your scroll wheel on your mouse or you can just click on the pieces. Doesn't really matter which. I was using the scroll wheel my entire time. And you can go ahead and you can select each piece one at a time. And you can use the Q and the E buttons on your keyboard to sort of push things back and forth. You can see that I can uh, do that with some of my hair 
right here to make it so it covers the eyebrow and stuff properly. You want to go back and do this until all of your pieces are layered properly. Like I just noticed that this arm is not actually layered quite correctly. I need to move the chest piece up, which means I need to move everything else up. Basically, it's, it's a big game of like stacking things on top of each other and you just do it until everything looks right and it's all sitting in the right place. I'm over here now! Okay, so once you have everything stacked and put in the right place, it'll still look very chaotic, especially around the face area. Don't worry. I promise the eye and the mouth pieces overlapping on top of each other are totally fine. Just make sure that you have at least one eye open piece and one eye closed piece, as well as one mouth closed piece and one mouth open piece. They're very important for making you blink and talk. It doesn't matter if they overlap each other, it's gonna look weird, let's fix it right now. So, click on one of those pieces, doesn't really matter which, we'll start with the eye open. And then if you look over at this menu over here, you got these two boxes that currently both have an X next to them right here. If you click on the right one, you can set them as eye open, eye closed, or back to a neutral state. So this is the eye open piece, so I'll set it to eye open. Then I will find my eye closed piece, and I will set it to eye closed, and you'll notice that they become semi-transparent when I do that. And then you can do the exact same thing for your mouth pieces, if I can find them in here. Right here. So this is the mouth closed piece. So you can do this and it'll show a little smiley face for the mouth closed. And then for the mouth open piece, all you have to do is set it to mouth open and it'll show the mouth being open. So then when I go out of the editing mode, you'll notice that, look, I'm talking. And every once in a while I'll blink and stuff too and it'll look just fine now. So no worries about them overlapping or anything like that. The program takes care of whether or not those show up or not, which is really neat. Um, and it reminds me a lot of how uh, things are sort of programmed in Live 2D. Same thing with all the physics and stuff that you can do in this as well. It's very, very similar to Live 2D if you've ever used it. Just a lot more simplified, which is really cool, honestly. Okay, so now let's get to the fun part. Making your model do this and having all these cool little bouncy effects where it looks like it almost has some sort of physics happening. So what you want to do is you want to select whatever piece you want. I'm going to select the chest. I'm actually using my finished model so you guys can kind of see the settings that I've used before. And we're going to talk about what each of these settings over on this side, down on this little uh, section here that has all of the sliders, does. So for each of these, there is a different effect. Let's start off with the top. You have the drag index. The drag index is going to do exactly what it says it does. It makes it drag. So if I bring this up all the way, you'll notice that there is a delay on the way that my chest bounces. It essentially uh, causes all of the bounce effects that you do from any of these other options down here to sort of slow down and smooth out. Then you have the X frequency and the X amplitude. I am not using this on any of the pieces of my model simply because I don't actually need it for mine. Depending on what angle your model is drawn out or what pieces you have, you might find more use to this than I did. So the X frequency and the X amplitude. Amplitude affects how much it swings back and forth on the X axis, so that's left and right. X frequency depends on how fast it swings back and forth. So if I put the amplitude up and then I put the frequency up, you can see that it starts swinging back and forth horizontally. I don't really need that with my model, but you might find it useful for yours. After that, you have um, probably one of the most important things about how this sort of physics engine works. It's the Y frequency and the Y amplitude. Same exact thing as the X frequency and X amplitude, except it's up and down instead of back and forth. So if I increase the amplitude, it will do it more, and if I do the frequency, it will do it faster. <laughs> Next, you have probably the most important effect, it's squash. So this little like squish effect that's happening on every single piece of my model, it's called the squash effect in this. If you increase it, and then I talk, boingy boingy boingy. I can only imagine what people are going to do with like booba physics for this. <laughs> Um, but you can set that to whatever you want. I have it set very small. Normally for me, I have it set between 0.3 and 1.0. Um, do whatever feels best for your model. I just feel like it looks more natural if you keep it very minimal. Next, you have something that I only used on a few pieces. I used it a little bit on the hair pieces and it's going to play into two more pieces that we are gonna look at. So it's called rotational drag. The rotational drag does the exact same thing as the normal drag index does, but instead of affecting sort of the bounciness, it affects how the model rotates when you use the rotational limit minimum and the rotational limit maximum. So all this does is it makes your model pieces swing back and forth in a circle. It makes them rotate. So I only set the rotational drag to one in either direction. It can either be positive one or negative one. It goes all the way up to 100 and then it starts doing some crazy when you do that. 
<laughs> so you can see that it goes kind of halfway around a circle and then these minimum and maximum limits will affect which way it can sort of swing and go around. And you know, if you put it all the way up like this, you're gonna get some kind of crazy results. So I have it set to positive one or negative one, depending on which way I want the piece of hair to swing. I actually have the front pieces of hair swinging one way and then the back pieces of hair, like the mullet and the hair back, swinging the other way. It makes it so it has this sort of centrifugal force feel and it looks like the hair is actually shaking back and forth when you put it all together. Something that I think that is important to remember for when you are putting this all together is something about the head itself. The head and all the pieces that have to do with your face and your facial expressions specifically, not the hair, just the facial expressions, your, your mouth open, your mouth closed, eye open, eye closed, your eyebrows, anything that has to do with an expression on your face need to all be moving at the exact same frequency, the exact same settings, no matter what they are, whether it's the rotational drag, the squash, the Y amplitude, any of it. Because if you don't, something like this will happen. I'm going to select my eyes and we're going to make them go a little bit wild right now. If I bring the squash up, you'll notice that it's not moving with my face anymore. It looks really weird. <laughs> you might be able to do something fun with that if you're doing it purposefully, but uh, for someone who is a beginner, I would recommend keeping that the same as whatever the rest of the settings on your face are. Uh, same thing with everything else. With one exception, um, I actually take my brows and I make the setting for the frequency 0.001 off from whatever the head is. So this right here is 0 0.023 for the Y frequency. I make it 0 0.024. And all that does is it makes it so my eyebrows move up and down just barely differently than the rest of my face. It makes it look like you're, you know, emoting. And it looks very natural that way. Once you are done with all of that, the only thing really left is this bounce frequency up here on the top of the menu. So if I bring this up, my character will start to jump higher and higher and you get a lot slower of a bounce effect on your model. This can be really useful if you're uh, kind of messing around with your settings for like if you're maybe excited and you're doing an excited expression uh, or for little things like that. The default is 250 and that's honestly kind of where I like to keep it about because it looks pretty natural that way. It looks kind of like, you know, you're just kind of bouncing up and down and talking. Once that's done, don't forget, save your avatar. Click the save button, save it in this uh, folder here, make a new folder for wherever you want it to be saved to, anything like that, and make sure you save it. And when it's all put together, you get something that looks a little bit like this. I think this looks pretty good. I want to try to experiment more and do things like adding more expressions and poses in the editor. I haven't had time yet to go ahead and add things like other arm poses, like gaming and drawing poses like I make with a lot of my other PNG tubers yet. But I absolutely want to because I want to experiment with this program a lot more. It's super fun. I want to give a big thanks to Kaya Kairos because um, their program is literally amazing. And for something that is a very new program that is still getting actively updated and things being added to it. It's awesome. And I think for PNG tubers, this is a really useful program that sort of treads the line between PNG tubing and live 2D, where you can get something that's a little bit more expressive, has a little bit more movement. It's really fun. I hope that people enjoyed the video and if you maybe want to see some more tutorials about this program and specific things that you can do with it, uh, leave a comment down below and if you have any questions I'll try to answer them as best I can. Uh, I am not the creator of this program, clearly uh, please go and support Kaya Kairos on their Ko-fi. Um, I will put a link to their Ko-fi in the description below so that way everyone can go and support them because legitimately this is such a cool program. Please give them all the love in the world. Don't forget, I'm opening my commission sometimes next week. That'll be around the mid-September mark. Thank you so much for watching, and keep it spooky, y'all. I'll see you next time.